Hello, everyone. Are you on break? Hi, now? I'm Kara Warner. I work for People Magazine, and I have the pleasure to be your moderator today. And I'm just going to get right to it and introduce this wonderful cast. Please welcome Mr. John Favreau, the director. <laughs> Ms. Lupita Nyong'o, the voice of Raksha. Mr. Neil Setti, Mowgli. Sir Ben Kingsley, the voice of Bagheera. Giancarlo Esposito, the voice of Aquila. And producer Brigham Young. Taylor, I almost said Brigham Young. Thank you. Yes, okay. Okay. So I will just start things off and then turn it over to you guys. Mr. Favreau, can you talk about why this movie at this time? Like what convinced you to go for it right now? Well, a lot of it was the enthusiasm of, of Disney and, and specifically Alan Horn, who's really connected with this film, uh, with the story as a, as, from the Kipling stories when he was growing up. And I connected very much with the, uh, with the animated film when I was growing up. And, and so we had common ground of, of both having great affection for this property. And the question became, if we love it so much in those other forms, why, why do it now? And... Uh, and, and as he pointed out to me, he says, look, when he saw Life of Pi, he realized that the technology may have come to a, a point where you can actually tell the story in a different way and, and maybe bring some of what exists in, existed in his imagination when he was growing up uh, visually onto the big screen. And I was very compelled with the idea of, of taking what can be done in visual effects now. Uh, and I was also very impressed with films like Planet of the Apes, Avatar, uh, Life of Pi as well, and, and specifically what was done in Gravity, the way that they filmed the principal photography as though, almost as though it were an element shoot for, for an effects, for an effects uh, piece. And, and it became a big puzzle. And, and, and after uh, sleeping on that and thinking about it, I came up with a, with a take on it, and when I came back and we all discussed it, it sound, sounded really, really cool. And so 100 years ago was the book, 50 years ago was the animated film, and now... 50 years later, it's time to update the story for our, for our generation. The actors, I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how John convinced you to come on board or sort of what you loved most about jumping in. John sat next to me at a party. Um, it was, uh, he, he seated himself next to me with a, his benign smile <laughs> and uh, invited me to play Bagheera. And I think I said yes before you got to the end of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had met, we had met on um, Iron, the set of Iron Man yep, 3. Yep. And I was just, I went from being completely starstruck to being, to being impressed until finally just feeling very, a lot of affection for him. He's a, Sir Ben's an incredibly generous, warm, wonderful storyteller in person and being an actor I got some whole days which I'm not used to having and we spent some time together in, in Miami. We did, I, think, I think that the, the, the captain in charge of the project um, brings his or her taste to the project and I knew John well enough and I'm fond enough of him to know that his taste and judgment and his perception of, of, of humanity and childhood uh, and storytelling uh, completely concur with mine, so it was a joy to, to join this beautiful project of his. How did you sort of, how were you convinced? Well, I, well, I, I met with John uh, while I was, I was very busy with the campaign for 12 Years a Slave at the time that I met with John, and he very quietly walked me through his idea for this uh, version of The Jungle Book, and what struck me was the compassion with which he was talking about these characters. You know, um, there was all this <clears throat> state of the art stuff he was going to do with it, but at the heart of it mm -hmm. was this the love of the story and like a real a vision for each character that he was going to bring to life. And for me, that was what got me. Nice. Nice. John and I were working on, uh, John called me to do a trailer for a game called Destiny. And there was a little piece uh, in the beginning of that trailer uh, that um, uh, father was reading to his son uh, the story of, of Mowgli uh, from the book. And so we connected immediately in between takes talking about the, the book and the material. And I, I'm a Kipling lover. 
and, uh, and, and it went away. And wouldn't it be cool if, we, if one day this could be a, a, re a re-realized uh, film? And, and, and John is so, um, as Sir Ben said, really in, in touch with uh, all of his experiences, and, and which is really wonderful when you meet someone who is that keen and that sharp, who has uh, not only the memory of it, but has the actual feeling for it. And uh, so we had this wonderful conversation regarding it. And then months later, he called me and said, hey, guess what? Um, which excited me very, very deeply. Just in my head, remembered him reading the, the, um, uh, the strength of the pack is the wolf and the strength of the wolf is the pack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and as we were developing the script for Jungle Book that I was hired for completely uh, years later, I think, or a year later, uh, I remembered him reading that when we worked together, and I said, that's the guy we need for Akilah, who's the one who's sort of passing the law down okay. to the next generation of wolves. So it's very weird how these things kind of, uh, it, it's, it's hard to imagine that there's not some guiding force to the way all of things that seemingly are. Exactly, for me, it's synchronicitous, out. because for me, this story came from my mother, my mother, I come from a, um, divorced parents, and I have a brother, so my mother would read this Law of the Jungle to us, really? because it was us three. Mm. We had to survive, it was the three so of us. Cool. And mm. so it really meant something very Wonderful. deep inside me. It's like why I tell my four girls now, you never leave a man behind. <laughs> when you go to the bathroom anywhere, you mm. never leave anyone behind. So that, that and plays that, through to my that life. became the theme. As we developed the script, that became our theme. And it all came from just Drawing back to the Kipling, drawing back to this experience, hearing a wonderful performance in my in my head that I had heard, and and then uh, so it organically e e evolved into that. Nice. Last question for me before I turn it over to you guys, uh, Neil, if you could talk about how crazy your auditions were, oh my God. and then sort of those first meetings you all had. I understand Mr. Favreau sort of had you sort of work through things, and if you could just kind of talk about what that was like starting to play around with the material. It, it, it felt like it was too easy, like that shouldn't have happened like so easily. I just auditioned once and John really liked me and then the first time I met um, Sir Ben Kingsley and Lupita, um, I voice recorded with Sir Ben and I met you at um, D23, right, the mm -hmm. convention, yeah. and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I got to see like my face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And what about the sort of how you orchestrated everyone meeting them, meeting each other? And well, I tried to get them to perform as much as I could together because uh, I didn't want, I, I've done animated voices before and, and the, it, it, it tends to degrade eventually to, okay, just say it again louder. <laughs> and, and, uh, and depending on how good the filmmaker is, either they use the loudest take because it has the most energy and wakes the kids up in the audience or they could weave together the subtlety of a performance, but it's a lot to ask of people. And I wanted this to feel like a live action film and not an animated film, and part of the key was to get a very conversational performance. And I know very much from being an actor, you rely upon your scene partner, and the energy of, of a scene partner modulates your energy and affects it because we're a communal species. We, we, we mirror each other, we key off each other, there are little status relationships going on, and scenes have to build and have a shape to them, and that comes from, it's a, it's a team sport. You, you play it all, like a tennis match with, with the person you're, you're in front of the camera with. Luckily, Neil came with me um, whenever I went to different locations, or I think, I think Sir Ben was the first person that Neil worked with, and of course, day, he's a, you know, a wonderful teacher and mentor and experienced thespian. And so passing good habits on to the next generation, which works so well for the relationship between the two of them on screen, and with Bill Murray as well, and then to get Bill Murray with Christopher Walken as well. So it's always trying to get combos and making sure that I had reference or capture data for the animators to work from. I'm curious for the actors to talk about surrendering their, themselves, their personalities, and some of their physical features into the, uh, the characters they're voicing and the relationship that an actor now has with the kind of surreal special effects that John has so uh, expertly uh, created with his team for this film. So starting with maybe Age Before Beauty, uh, Sir Ben, would you like to uh, address that? My, my secret uh, to my performance, I discovered later, uh, which is odd, 
but I had an intuitive feeling, grasp of, 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 of something in him, and I realized much later that I actually am playing Kipling, that, that Bagheera is Rudyard Kipling. He's the voice of Kipling in the story.